what you've got there is a hoop that apparently spins forever. And of course, it's an illusion. A very clever one used by advertisers. They put that in a shop window. It's a great attention getter when you look at what's on the display. Sometimes it's more than one ring. It's uh, three or four, all apparently running on each other in this precarious tower that threatens to fall down and never actually does. It's an illusion, a trick, and I'll show you how to do it. Not with rings like that, but with the cardboard variety and a very simple motor. Well, for cardboard rings, start with a cardboard tube. One of these things from an empty paper roll and you have to reinforce it in a couple of vital places. You do that with sticky tape. Take one strip of sticky tape and put it all the way down that side and make sure it's straight and doesn't have any ruckles in it. Then you turn the tube over and opposite the first piece of tape, you put another. So they really are directly opposite each other running down the tube like that. And then snip off all the mucky bits so that you have a clean end of the tube to start from. Now we're going to cut those rings and they have to be about a half a centimetre wide. So you come in from the clean end of the tube, put the scissors right on the edge of the tape. It's a bit hard to see because it's clear, but you can perhaps just see it there. Put the point of the scissors in. They must be pointy scissors, not blunt, and start to snip. And you go all the way around until you meet the tape again. Not that bit of tape. You can cut through that, but the piece of tape where you first started. Don't cut through that because that is now a little reinforced hinge. You can go halfway through, but no further. And there's your first ring. Now the second one starts not from this piece of tape, but from the opposite one. So turn it round, do the same thing again. Scissors in on the edge of the tape. Don't distort the tube too much. Cut your way around through, this time, that piece of tape and not through this one. Now I'm making rather a pig's breakfast of all of that, but if you do it neatly, it'll come up rather like that. There I've got three rings. I pull them apart a bit and I can make the fourth one by cutting the tube right off there. Scissors in and don't worry about the tapes at all, go through the lot. That'll give you four rings with the last one, the flat bit, acting a bit as a base. Now, of course, with the chrome rings, they're really lovely and shiny and they're no messy bits to catch your eye. So before you go any further, clean those up a bit. If you have nasty little bits like that, snip them off and try and trim the rings so that they really are as smooth as you can. You get a much better illusion that way. Also, it'll look better if you paint them. That's just ordinary cardboard. You can colour them with felt pens so that they're different colours each, like that. Or, better still, get silver paint or a silver pen and make them as close as you can to the chrome rings. That's the set I'm going to use. You'll notice I've pulled them apart so they really form a sort of zigzag. That should do the job well. You see they stand up like that. Clear the decks and we'll do the motor. For the motor you need a card and you need to cut it into a square. I'm just using ordinary cards here but anything does. That's not quite a square but it'll do as long as it's pretty regular. You need a thread at each corner which can be done by making a little hole and tying the thread through it but there's no need for that. I just use sticky tape and stick a thread on in each place. Before you do that though, turn it over and add weight by putting a 20 cent piece right in the middle. Don't unbalance it by going off to one side. And again, with a sticky tape, wonderful stuff sticky tape, stick that on and make sure it's secure. That's heavy so that it'll make the card spin better and also it will pull on the threads, unwind them and get a lot of speed up. Well, with the threads on each corner and your 20 cent underneath, pull all the threads up to the top and when the platform is hanging absolutely flat and level, tie the strings off at a distance of about 50 centimetres from the card. You've got this little hammock on which you can make your uh, ring set. Well, I've got one set up here. We'll bring it in and I'll show you how it goes. There we are, flat card, 20 cent underneath for weight and about 50 centimetres of thread up above. Now you get this platform and give it a spin and it'll wind the strings up. You let it do that till they're wound up, oh, about two thirds, even three quarters of their length. Just leave enough space at the bottom to be able to get those rings in there. And I think that will do. So we hold the platform still, bring our rings in there, sit them right on the middle or else they'll fly off into space and you won't get any illusion at all. When they're properly in the middle and it's wound up, make sure it doesn't swing like a pendulum, let it go. It'll unwind, it'll spin, and at the fastest speed, you get the illusion of the spinning rings.
Cause it 